So this is what it's like to be a thumbnail. Hi, I'm Ben, and let's talk colliders. Now this video is going to contain three sets of tests. The first two are more generic, and the final one is specific to a game that I'm currently working on. Let's get started. Before I jump into the tests, I'll give a brief rundown of my testing methodology and what you are about to see. I use the Unity Profiler to collect the data, however I won't be performing a deep profile for a few reasons. Firstly, this slows things down, and I found it led to less consistent results. Second, in this video I'm looking at the overall physics collider performance, not the performance of specific calls within the physics side of Unity. And finally, all of the performance I'll be measuring is within fixedupdate.physicsfixedupdate, which is trackable without the deep profile. A brief comment on the fixed update times. The times shown in this video are the total time spent in this function per frame. There could be multiple calls in a single frame. So when the profiler has spiky output like this, it's usually just because in one frame this method was only called once, while in the next it was called multiple times. I won't be going into detail about Unity's fixed update timing system in this video. All you need to know is that in order for the physics simulation to keep up, it may run multiple updates in a single frame. I also set the quality settings to very low in the editor to produce more consistent results. And finally, I'm exporting the results from each test into the profile analyzer. This is available as a Unity package and something I'd highly recommend for doing performance comparisons. In this video, we care specifically about the contents of the right panel, more specifically the median and mean values. Just a reminder, median is the middle value in a set and mean is the average value of that set. Any questions? I'm starting with the worst case scenario to show you just how much of a performance difference using a primitive or a convex mesh collider can make. I'm using Unity's built-in sphere game object. One sphere will use the primitive sphere collider and the other a convex mesh collider. For each test, I generate the spheres in the shape of a cube, wait five seconds, and then enable gravity on the rigid bodies attached to the colliders. This weight ensures that none of the instantiation overhead affects the simulation. All right, let's begin. Yeah, there's a lot of information here, and I won't be going over all of it. I'm going to be giving a brief overview focused specifically on the mean and median values. You can pause and look at the data yourself. I mean, if you want, but I mean, come on. What, do you not trust me or something? There are a couple things to point out. In the top left, we have the data being compared. For the basic tests, the primitive data will be blue and the convex data will be orange. In the middle, you can see the physics fixed update entry and the bar here shows which median was longer. And finally, the right panel has more detailed comparison information. Okay, let's analyze the data. As you saw from the simulations themselves, they both ran quite smoothly. There simply aren't enough spheres here to really cause issues. However, we can see already that the convex mesh is performing worse. Onto 4096 spheres, here we start to see the convex mesh penalty more clearly. Also notice how the primitive spheres roll much further away and maintain the momentum. So on top of being more performant, they're also more realistic. of interesting notes here. During the initial primitive collisions, you can see a bump in performance that comes down as the spheres start to roll away and collide less. The bump is still much faster than the mesh colliders though. Also, the mesh collider max is a bit misleading. The physics system is performing so badly here that it's being throttled. In other words, the maximum number of fixed updates that could be run in a frame is being reached. It's just really bad. Again, this was just a worst case comparison to show that there is a considerable performance difference between primitives and complex mesh colliders. This test is kind of weird, but I thought I'd do it just because I was curious, given a Q primitive, how the convex mesh would perform. Both colliders here have the exact same shape and are very simple. Here we have one cube with a box collider and the other cube with a convex mesh collider. Can you tell which is which? Why well, is this one, of course? Starting again with 1000 cubes, there is a negligible performance difference. 
It's worth mentioning that my computer did not run the simulation super consistently, so I ran them a few times and determined that these differences are within the margin of error. In other words, the performance is almost identical. Not much to say about 4096 cubes. The performance is just like the 1000 cube test. It's very similar and definitely within the margin of error. Next! At 8,000 cubes, everything just falls apart. Both simulations are being throttled, so the numbers are somewhat meaningless. I consider the performance here to be equivalent. All in all, what I'm showing here is that a very simple convex mesh collider has similar performance characteristics to a primitive collider. Now let's apply this to my game. Creating thousands of rigid bodies and having them fall onto each other is great and all, but for most games and uses, this isn't going to happen. So as I mentioned, I've got a game in the works, and it has hover tanks. You can see my devlogs on this channel for more information. All you really need to know here is that in my battles, there may be a few hundred tanks. Since they're low poly, I just used their meshes as convex colliders, and I didn't think twice. Let's see if that was a mistake. I rigged up four different collider configurations for this experiment. First we got the convex only tank. Everything is convex. Pretty simple. Second we got the multi-primitive tank. There is a single primitive for the turret, and two primitives for the base. Basically, I was just trying to approximate the convex mesh using only primitives. Third, we've got the single primitive tank. The hull and turret each only have one primitive. And finally, we have the simple convex tank, with a special mesh made specifically for the hull. The turret just uses a primitive, because it's a close enough approximation. I'll only be doing this test with 1500 tanks, since that is about twice the worst case possible in my game. In an attempt to more closely resemble the movement behavior in my game, I spawn the tanks in a large ring facing inwards, and each fixed update I apply a forward force. The rigid bodies are also frozen on a few axes to keep them from going out of control. As I mentioned earlier, the simulations weren't running super consistently. In order to get more reliable data, I ran through each of these simulations three times. I'll show the most average of the runs when comparing the data, and give the overall averages at the end. The simulations for each test looked very similar, so I won't be showing them before each set of results. So, starting with the convex tank versus the multi-primitive tank. This was a lot closer than I would have guessed. I thought multiple primitives would be much faster, but after doing some digging, it appears as though having an extra collider on another nested transform could be the issue. Unfortunately, in this case, I need this collider to be separate because I want it rotated at 45 degrees. In any case, the solution for me is obviously not the multi-primitive tank. Now for convex versus single primitive. These are the results I expected. The single primitive tank performs much better than the convex tank. Of course, I'm giving up collision accuracy, and I'm really not a fan of the flat front collider when it should be sloped. Finally, convex versus simplified convex. The simple convex performs much better and allows for a reasonable level of accuracy. Before this testing, I really thought my low poly models were low poly enough that a simplified convex collider wouldn't be worth it. Evidently, I was wrong. And here we have a graph of the average times. So in my case, switching to a simplified convex collider would save approximately 31% of my fixed update time. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. No! Take another look at the simulation. And then my game. Both side by side. What's different? First off, in my game, there aren't that many collisions. Tanks are often destroyed before colliding with each other, and the physics system is also smart enough to not check for collisions for objects that are too far apart. Furthermore, there's a lot more going on in my game than just collisions. I perform a lot of raycasts, which wasn't tested here, although I bet the primitive convex mesh would perform better. What I'm saying is this is a pretty theoretical improvement, and the only way to really know would be to implement it and collect some more data. So I implemented it and collected some more data! Like the other tank tests, I did three tests with convex, and three tests with simplified colliders. Uh, in this case there's only 80 tanks though to be more realistic to my game. Now the results! And hey, it's not 31%, but it's still a decent improvement. That is, until I bring in the average frame times.
only about a 3% improvement. And yeah, optimizing is usually about finding lots of small improvements and improving that frame rate bit by bit. But you know, I was hoping for a little bit more here. So what's my takeaway? Well, obviously primitives and simplified convex colliders are better, so you should use those if possible, but this is definitely not a magic bullet for performance in my game. It might be for yours though. It was pretty easy for me to get this set up within my own game, and giving it a quick test can't hurt. Well, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, like, subscribe. If you have any suggestions for another Collider video, throw them in the comments, I might do one. I'm also thinking of doing a video on Raycast, because those are pretty integral to my game as well, but we'll see. And until then, I'm going to go back to being a thumbnail.